Okay, in this case study, we're going to look at a, a real simple case, a very common problem when somebody has a lateral that is cracked, the tooth is fractured or broken off the gum line. In this case, uh, it's broken off of the gum line, it's non-restorable, root canal treated tooth. Uh, it's a very common problem. And um, what I want to discuss a little bit is about the immediate placement element of it using a CT. But I'm also looking at the length. Um, I'm looking at how to make a decision whether or not you should graft the case when you put the implant in, uh, whether or not you should put a healing collar, what the benefits of all these things are um, before we collapse the gum line and things like that. This person's going to get a stay plate for this one tooth, uh, and that's, you know, obviously out of the bite and um, doesn't impinge on the wound site. Uh, and we don't have like a contour pont because in this case I put in a healing collar to help keep the contour of the tissue there in place. Uh, so let's look at this case here. This case is a facial uh, bone issue. The facial bone here is pretty thin and this is something you really need to check when you do the extraction. And actually, this extraction, you really have to be careful not to fracture that facial plate. That is a must. When you have a fracture, it creates an inflammatory response that can help or will help basically dissolve that facial plate. And that's what you really don't want. So you really have to get a periotome and make sure that you whittle this around. And if it's broken off with the gum line, you know, you just have to have that tact and patience to, to get into that PDL and get that out. And I understand when you're looking at a root canal tree of teeth, you have to think that it's ankylosed. And this is an older gentleman. So luckily, this came out fairly easily, didn't take a lot of effort, but, uh, and the facial plate's intact. Now, in this scenario, this patient does have a red bone constriction, but mainly at the bottom arch. Luckily, that didn't transfer too much uh, natively to this patient that it constricted here. That would have been very difficult if this had constricted in and possibly would not have been able to have been done at all, but you would definitely would have had to graft this and created a two-bone healing event, meaning let the graft heal in the bone, take a CT in three to four months to see where that bone went because that constriction is very difficult to get and you'd have to have a shorter implant. For this lateral. Now, the patient does have um, adjacent teeth, so it could have done a three unit bridge, of course. Um, but the bone quality is very good. So that's what I like about this case. The bone quality is very good. This is a 13 millimeter implant that I placed in here. Um, so I know I could get a good four millimeters of bone while I place that. So if I, if I just do a simple measurement from here to here, we're just over four millimeters. So you want four millimeters of implant. If you, if you have a system that has a 16 millimeter length available, this could have been a 16 millimeter length uh, immediate placement as well. And you would get even more stability uh, if you're looking at something like that. I didn't, I don't normally use it ever a 16. I don't think I've used more than a couple in the past uh, 18 years. So, um, uh, yeah, 13 is enough, uh, that 4 millimeters is enough. And remember, you have adjacent walls, mesial distal, in the socket side that will help stabilize it. So, in this case, let's look at the placement. Here, my placement is below the bone um, by about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters. Now, you can see the facial plate wall here. We've got about, a, once we get to the height of the implant, we've got about a millimeter, millimeter and a half uh, distance to the implant. This implant in particular has uh, a taper in uh, around the neck. And that's what I want because when you look at the case here, uh, in this viewpoint, what I'm really looking at, uh, this is what's so nice about having a CT, is that when I start looking at where that bone height is, I've designed my implant to adhere going on that lingual side of the socket site 
and it fits just really nice. It's really perfect. But when you look at actually how it's going to emerge from where the other teeth are, the other teeth are constricting into my site, and that means I w I'm going to have I want to have tissue built in there. I want to have a nice contour. So this this kind of system here that I like to put in here has a a, a, a more narrow neck, more like an Astra type of implant system where what I call like at the top third or the mount area has like a reverse taper so the bone will come in and now you can contour out and get that tissue out and maintain a nice contour um, without having to worry about being constricted too much. If you had a you know 4.5 millimeter diameter implant here that's going to take up quite a bit of the space between these two and these two natural teeth. And that's actually the little bit of a challenge on this case. Um, but just good to recognize that this is uh, a suited case for implants that have more of a narrow neck or more of a reverse, uh, um, a, a reverse taper at the neck, but also that has a smaller mount that has uh, more capability that you can deal with the tissue contouring when you're done with the case or when you're actually doing the prosthetics of the case. Um, and this picture here is the implant. Uh, I moved that a little bit more apically, and this is the actual healing collar. This is a stock healing collar that has a nice taper to it, and I put it just sub gingival. You can see this here, that it's gonna help stabilize this surrounding tissue and my um, stay plate actually comes right into the tissue right about here. This would have been a nice case to do a custom contour abutment uh, around here too. Um, the only problem is, is I don't like that I only have four millimeters of stability in a couple walls. Um, if this were, were, if I had more spacing and more room and had a little bit more girth of bone to get into, I would have liked to have done a little bit more of a custom contour piece here, but when you do custom contour abutments, you got to be aware that you cannot have anything hit on the top of those, and those typically come a little bit higher, they're broader, they have more surface area, therefore a, a higher chance of micro fracture or micro movement on the implant itself, and that's where I really, really don't want to. So I take these pictures for our, for just our own um, doctors to see, um, our own cataloging of the case, but I do use these pictures, especially this one, to explain to the patient what is going to happen uh, in that, that they're going to see this metal, and I don't want them to freak out and think that this is actually the actual implant. It, it's a conduit to the implant, is what I tell them, or that this is a connector piece, and that this connector piece is going to help hold, stabilize this tissue. However, please keep this clean because this probably won't close up. Uh, the tissue is going to grow in and around that, maintaining its contour, but it won't grow over this. And a lot of this is going to shrink back. This is post-extraction, and so the tissue is a bit inflamed, and that's going to actually shrink back a little bit and uh, everything else. So this is a really cool case. It's a very simple case. This is a uh, case that I think that most everybody could do, but the care comes into the extraction, maintaining the facial plate, realizing there's no constriction to worry about, and having the right implant system on board when you actually are placing the implant because the prosthetic needs are going to have more of a facial uh, tissue line demand that you're going to have to try to create that to look natural. This person luckily doesn't have a high lip line, so cosmetically, I don't really have to worry about that um, too much at all. So he's really looking for function that he is looking for cosmetics.